This is another lo-fi let's play with Lee Alexander. We're revisiting vintage games at virtualapple.org. Um, this week we're going to go with a 1983 Penguin Software classic. It's called The Coveted Mirror. It's by Holly Thomason and Eagle Burns. Um, I understood from uh, some reading that I did that um, Mr. Burns' objective with this game uh, was to make something that was engaging without being violent. Um, you know, this game is actually kind of a bugbear from my childhood in that I played a lot of it and was never quite able to get my head around it. Um, despite that, that fact, I maintain real strong memories of this one, and uh, I continue to this day to think it's a particularly interesting game with some innovative elements. Um, it's interesting, the relationship that I have with these games from my childhood, um, because uh, last week I said something like, it always feels like I'm, I'm in a dialogue with these quirky old uncles. Um, before beginning this game, I did some research, and I found that Eagle Burns passed away in 2004. So, in revisiting this game, I'm, I feel like I'm going back to talk to someone who was there when I was little, um, but who isn't there anymore. Uh, that sounds a little bleak, but uh, this game is actually quite funny and sweet, so um, maybe let's remember Eagle Burns as uh, we revisit this game. Uh, Again, it's called The Coveted Mirror. The premise is, long ago and far away, in the land of Starbury, the people were happy and life was good. But all that changed when Voar the Evil came unto the land. In an attempt to seize the magical mirror, he clumsily broke it to pieces. As he fled, he grabbed four of the five shards, find the fifth piece, and break his power. So, let's, uh, let's get this game started over here. I have to mount a new disc. Thank you for bearing with me. And let's begin. The loading times in this one can be a little bit long. Aha! We are in the presence of mighty King Voar. One interesting thing about this game you'll notice is that it has animations in almost every scene, um, which is kind of good for 1983. And you'll see as well we have an hourglass over here, which is going to, as you might imagine, feature prominently in the gameplay. So, hello, mighty King Voar. Oops. There we go. Nope. We need to have a caps lock on. There. Thank you. Technical difficulties. This is uh, lo-fi. Um, I'll have thee beaten for thy insolence off to the tower. That's one. I'll only allow it 25 times. Wow, that's a lot of times to allow someone to be insolent. Um, we must enjoy beating people. So as the game begins, we find we're here in the dank, desolate prison tower. And when I thought about how to present this game for you guys, I became a little bit torn. Um, should I just play it organically, um, as I think you might do if you had the same opportunity? Or should I play it in the way that I know? And, you know, let's just try to do it a little bit of both. Um, because I want you to see as much of the game as possible, but I also want you to understand the ins and outs of how it plays with you and how it's clever. Um, it's a game that uh, actually requires you learn it as you play, uh, you know, memorize some different things as you go through it, and then uh, the more familiar you are, with the game and its, and its world, the less time you waste, and the more you can get accomplished. So, um, what have we got here in this tower? There's a window. You learn the castle's on a rocky hill. Uh, and there's a bed. It wobbles as if it's been moved often. Aha! Shall we try? Something's happening. Yeah! So we found a hole in the wall that we could enter. It's dark in here at least right now, so it suggests that maybe at some point we could resolve the darkness. Um, I happen to know the exit to this passage is here to the west. We find ourselves in a magician's room, um, having emerged from a cupboard. And as you see, if you'll take note of this hourglass, with every move we make, this line along the bottom gets a little longer, and when one line fills, another one begins. Um, this tiny little white dot to the side uh, suggests how much time we have before we have to be back in the tower. How did I know that? Well, you're on the right track. Let's read a book. Dear Diary, if that old witch doesn't give me her invisibility spell soon, I'll change her into a starberry strawberry. To continue, read page two. I wonder if Voir knows Boris lets prisoners roam if they offer him the right things. And this was very mysterious to me as a kid, because it's already telling me about people that I don't know anything about. So, uh, interestingly enough, there must be a Boris around here somewhere. Don't worry, everyone. I'll introduce you to him. Let's read page three. 
Boris keeps close watch on that hourglass, but sometimes he falls asleep and prisoners get extra time. If Boris wakes to find their time is up, but they're not back in prison, he reports them to Voir. So Voir uses the magic mirror to whisk them back and gladly puts their booty in his treasure room. So from this we're learning that uh, we may uh, journey out into the world a little bit and collect some objects, but we must be back in the room by the time the hourglass comes out. Uh, we may be able to bribe the guard um, to stay out a little bit longer. And if we're caught out of the castle, we'll lose all of our inventory, which sounds like it would be... Um, pretty prohibitive in this game, which as you'll see is actually uh, about collecting and collecting things, speaking to different people, and uh, doing this beautiful little nesting doll set of a fetch quest series. Um, it doesn't sound fun, but trust me, it is. Uh, even Voir cannot see beyond the impenetrable mist. Hmm, I wonder what that means. Okay. Look, fireplace. You could use it if you have what it takes. You ain't got what it takes. Alas, okay. Let's see. A winding staircase. Let's climb the staircase. Who dwells in the round tower? Well, I don't know, but I see a necklace there that I'd like to have. So you can't open this door right now, and I don't want to waste too much of our precious time by trying, because I want to show you as much of this wonderful adventure game as possible. Um, again, very clever with some puzzles and some timing-oriented things. Um, uh, if we were to explore further in the castle right now, we'd be spotted. Um, you reckon there's an invisibility spell somewhere in this game? Because I do. I've never quite discovered it, though. That's the interesting thing about these games, is that uh, they're so obtuse, and they require so much uh, learning their vocabulary and their ins and outs, and that you're often teased with details that you might never reach. The queen used to open this window. Oh, maybe we should open the window and gaze lovingly over the land. For sure, put an end to that. Poor queen. Good lord. Okay, um, let's go out. Uh, that's to the east. The bushes seem somewhat trampled outside Voar's Castle of Evil. Um, probably because a lot of people escape through the window. The main entrance is not for peasants, but that's okay. You know, I think we're trying to escape and not re-enter the castle anyway. <gasps> Sand's running low already, so we, uh, we have one more line. So as many moves as, as we've made so far, we have that many moves to return. If you don't mind, I'm going to be a little bit conservative about it this time around, because it would be really awful to die during a Let's Play, especially of a game that I know so well. Um, look, face. She's too far away. Well, that's a shame, isn't it? Vor's Castle of Gloom rises before thee. Okay, let's continue as far away from the castle as we can. You hear the raucous bustle of a town to the south. One interesting thing about these games is that they also were very good for teaching vocabulary words such as raucous, bustle, things like that. Um, and the interesting thing about this game is that knowing every move counts. It actually plays with the finickiness of the parser to be actually quite persnickety with you. Type climb tree, it suggests try going up, okay? Interestingly, you know, we've talked a few times um, in uh, the Apple games that we've played recently about tree climbing and how uh, you can't assume that you can climb a tree and you can't assume that you can't. So if you see a picture of a tree in any of these games, always try to climb it because in cases like this, really going out on a limb, aren't you? We might be able to find something such as an axe. Try spelling it axe. Aha, it's really trying to make us spend our time, isn't it? So, we haven't got that much time left, but I th think that we can explore just a little bit further, um, interestingly enough. Anybody here? No? Okay. Um, let's just head this way. Starstruck Stanislo, the astrologer, hoping to impress the lovely Nalini. The interesting thing about this game is that the town is actually quite populated. Um, there are all kinds of people uh, that you can talk to and interact with. Uh, he might take a little bit of our time, so what do you say we, we visit this man later? Starlight, Starbright, I hopest I have a date tonight. Sully quaint townsfolk of Starberry. Um, what do you say we go back to prison for now? Uh, let's head back north. Oh! Hello, Starina. Yeah, another thing about this game is that uh, townsfolk who help you can appear uh, randomly or otherwise. Let's, I'm cutting it real close here, but let's have a talk. Keep this privy in thine own heart. I saw a thief drop a tool of his trade near the tavern. Well, you know, we may not know where that is yet, but perhaps we'll discover it in time. 
Uh, let's try to go home uh, as quickly and directly as we can with as few mistakes as possible. Uh, you know, I wonder if we'll even make it. Uh, that'll be funny if we don't. Um, that's never happened to me uh, in public before, but uh, I'm taking the bull by the horns in order to demonstrate the true risks and excitement uh, of all of this for you. Uh, okay, we enter the castle. I wonder if we'll get home in time. Oh no, I wasted a move. This may not work out. Which way do I go? Um, north. The magician's room. So now, here's the thing that this game likes to do to you. Um, if I were to type open cabinet, it would correct me and say it's a cupboard. So you'll never make that mistake twice when you're short on time as we are today. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, time's up, you've been caught. So what happens when we get caught? Uh, we're returned to the throne room of Voar. Let's bow. I'll have thee beaten for thy insolence. Oh my goodness, did we lose our axe? I think we might have done. Well, that's a pain in the butt, isn't it? Not carrying anything. I wonder, let's, let's start again, and I'll do this a lot more efficiently for you. Um... This time we won't lose the axe, now that we've gotten to see some things, but actually it's kind of interesting that we've failed during this playthrough, because this game seems to expect that you're going to fail a lot. I mean, when you think about everything you've seen me do, I didn't waste any time, because I know what this game can and can't do. <gasps> wow, it, it started us with some extra time, because we started over. Wow, I wonder if that's a, a hack of some kind uh, uh, delivered by the ROM hackers. Well, good. We've learned some things. So now if you see over here, we have a much higher line on the hourglass. Normally we score that line by, by bringing things back to the guard who, if you wait here, he appears. I'm thy guard, Boris bad and mad. Don't make me badder and madder. Uh, and then if you wait, he goes away again. Uh, but uh, you bring objects that you find outside to him in order to raise this line here alongside the hourglass to buy yourself more time to escape and play. Um, so uh, now, for some reason, the game, uh, thanks to probably the people who cracked it, have uh, created a little trick whereby if you use the word restart, you have a little more, a little more luck. Um, but let's take advantage of that opportunity, and I'll show you a little bit more of the world of Starberry and uh, all the people in it. Um, and hopefully, we won't, we won't lose too many things this time. Uh, let's continue. Let's ignore the axe this time because we've already bought bought a bunch of extra time now. This is pretty exciting. Let's go back and visit that astrologer. Gosh, I feel like, you know, suddenly we've been given a lot more rope than we had before. Full reign, if you will. Uh, we don't know who this face is, but perhaps we could find out. With the help of an astrologer, I happen to notice uh, that he found a telescope in his, in his possession. Uh, did you see the telescope? I did. And also remember our friend Starina. Uh, told us that there was a lockpick near the tavern. Uh, the grounds unkempt here, east of the tavern on Hollyhock Lane. Ah, because we haven't spoken to Starina, the lockpick she discussed hasn't appeared. So here we are. Does she appear again? Yes, she does. Thank you, Starina. She saw the thief drop it, so now it may be there. Now, I happen to know no, it's not there yet. Uh, so maybe we've bugged something a little bit. Um, I happen to know... Oh! Good lord! Looks like we've reloaded an old save with where someone has done a good bulk of the work for us. That's unpleasant, isn't it? Well, why don't I just show you around this world a little bit more? Let's check this out. You don't have it. Well, let's take it. Ha! You chuckle-headed loon. I'll wager my scope. You can't name these simple constellations. Well, folks, I know that this is Orion. This is Scorpio. And this is Gemini. I learned this from this game, by the way. Everything I know about astrology has been taught to me by Apple II games. All right, take it. I knew I should have stayed home today. My horoscope was horrible. Okay. Got it. 
All right. Well, good. Given that uh, the person who played this game before us seems to have already done a lot of the lifting for us, I can just show you around. Um, I'll explain some of the uh, wonderful little caprices of this populated town with you. Again, there's a lot of random events. Um, this traveling man here comes, Adam Amble Ramble. Everyone has a name sort of based on, on what they do. Talk. So, I told Gareth he doesn't need bellows when he has Netta for hot air. I assume Netta is uh, Gareth's wife. Awesome, let's joke about how his wife is annoying. Cool. Uh, and then, look, window. That's Alice's difficult child. In here, it's the hovel of Alice Always Home. See, everyone has sort of a cute and clever name about what they do. And I honestly, I think that the, uh, the homes and the images in this game have a ton of character. Before they stole his rosary beads, Brother John taught sign language in the tavern. Now he only goes there on special occasions. Well, I don't go to the tavern on any occasion, honestly, because uh, if you walk into the tavern, all of your things will be stolen, and I don't know how to get them back. One of my plans for today involves playing this game with an official walkthrough, because, you know, as much as I think that I know about this game, The Coveted Mirror, I love my new bellows. Looks like we got the bellows from Gareth and gave it to Henry already in a previous save. Um, yeah, if there's, you know, one thing that's interesting about this game, no matter how much I know about it, no matter how much I've played, when I finally read a walkthrough for the first time yesterday, it was like reading Greek. I, I really can't understand how the solution to this game pertains to uh, the way that I understand it to be already. Um, okay. Hi, Granny. Grandchild, the abbot stole the candlestick that I left thee in my will. Hopefully you can see that a lot of this game is to do with uh, talking, finding out what people need, and obtaining something to trade them for it. We have a telescope, a shovel, and some bones. Oh, by the way, this is yet another Apple game that involves digging in graveyards. Uh, I think uh, with the exception of uh, the quest, so far almost all of the lo-fi let's plays have asked us to dig up graves. Um, the quest asked us to dig uh, in a pile of earthquake rubble and find a gold watch, but, uh, sorry, the quake, not the quest. Um, earthquake San Francisco was the second installment in our lo-fi let's play series, and, uh, yeah, it turns out digging and climbing are things that you should generally be looking to do in these games a lot. Now, I try playing this with friends, and sometimes they, they ask me, how do you understand, Lee, what you can and can't do? And I sort of compare it to playing Dungeons & Dragons, where, you know, there are a lot of subtle rules about the way that role-playing worlds work, uh, that some things oppose other things, and that some classes have some abilities and can be expected to have certain items, and it's really not so different than that, um, you know, learning about the different uh, languages and affordances that things have. This is Sarah Scrubbenshine from the Wayfarer's Inn. Give Ferd some grain, and he'll love thee forever. Okay, what have we got here? Burnt bun butter, baking truly scrumptious ginger cookies. Oh, sounds good. Can I have a cookie? Not unless you bring an ingredient for chocolate mousse. Well, that seems like it could be a pun. Do we have anything to do with a mousse? I don't think so. Uh, maybe give picture? Nope. Give bones? No. Alrighty then. Uh, I don't know how to get the cookie just now, but maybe we don't need it. Let's continue exploring. We're at South Castle Street. Uh, here's the alchemist, uh, Gareth, who's the one uh, that we got the bellows from. And I really do love just that there's very subtle sparks coming off of his alchemist's equipment. Again, this world has so much character, so much flavor, interestingly enough. So, one thing that's interesting, um, about this game is that it has an action sequence that I've never quite had the guts to try. Uh, I don't know if we'd break the game if I tried it. Uh, so why don't we go and visit the jousting arena and see how we do. You know what? I'm gonna bite the bullet. I'm gonna type Y. Flip the disc over and type Go. Okay, so let me try to mount a different disc and see if that you know, playing with old uh, emulators can be a little finicky, but let's see. Go! Wow, are we on our way to the jousting arena? 
Do you want instructions? Of course. Hear ye, hear ye. If ye wish to defeat Sir Local Yokel, our champion, hit his shield with thy lance and bounce him off his horse. He'll be trying to do the same to thee. If ye hit each other's shields at the same time, I'll deem it a draw. If ye both miss each other's shields at the same time, I'll call it a boring draw. See, this game is very witty. Very witty, very sweet. Uh, to win the joust, you must win four rounds in a row. Okay, uh, if thy hourglass time runs out, you'll be called back to Voir the Vermin. Sorry about that. Also, you may leave our good company any time by hitting the escape key. Okay, that seems, uh, seems nice. Sir Local shall strike thee fast within eight seconds. He's on the left, and thou art on the right. Move thy lance up by typing A and down by typing Z. Got it. Thou movest by shield up by typing semicolon and down by typing period. To thrust forward, hit the space bar. Okay. Wish me luck, everybody. Here we go. Let's see how this goes for us. Oh! Oh, we hit each other's shields, okay? Looks like we uh, had a draw. Oh! Oh no, it's a draw again! <laughs> Alright. I don't know what that fault time meter... Oh, did I get him? I think I got him. No, nope, it was a draw again. Well, this is an entertaining day at the jousting arena, everybody. Oh, oh, I got him. I think I hit him. Oh no, I lost. Okay. I thought I was on the right. Well, good thing I don't live in medieval times, because I would be terrible at jousting. Oh, okay. It looks like a boring draw. I think this other guy is pretty good. How is that a loss? I thought, well, maybe I'm on the other right. <laughs> no, this is definitely me over here. Oh, okay, well, how about that? Oh, victory! Yeah, maybe I'm on the other right. <laughs> These games are real mysteries, aren't they? Oh, I won again. Okay. Maybe uh, we can win four times. No, it's a draw again. Interesting uh, how a lot of these Apple II games, while mostly being parser-based adventures, um, often had action timing elements in them. Um, the real example of action timing elements that I wanted to show you, uh, Escape from Rungistan, is unfortunately not available uh, on this particular emulator. So, anyway. I don't know if we're uh, really liable to uh, win this jousting match here, and uh, I can't even understand why I keep losing when it seems that I'm hitting him in the face. So why don't we call it a day right here? Uh, we're, we're, we're right about at our time. Um, anyway, this game is really interesting. I'm going to actually go back and revisit it through a walkthrough uh, so that you can see all the character and the flavor and all the fun little exchanges that get to take place, all the guessing games. And uh, maybe eventually one day we'll find out who's in that tower. Um, thanks for tuning in for another lo-fi lo Let's Play with Lee Alexander. I love to see about the beautiful possibility spaces that old games can teach us, and um, I hope you were interested by this game's use of time and uh, objects, as I was. Have a good one.